There are actually four different kinds of agave utensis, four different taxa of agave utensis. There's agave utensis subspecies cababensis, agave utensis subspecies utensis, and then within that category, agave utensis subspecies utensis variety eborospina and variety nevadensis. Those last two, eborospina and nevadensis, are like everybody's favorite. They're the ones you see all over Instagram. They're the ones that I photograph primarily. And so today we're going to talk about the difference between Eborospina and Nevadensis. So as I said, there are four varieties of utensis. There's cababensis, subspecies utensis, and then eborospina and nevadensis. Cababensis primarily grows in northern Arizona around the Grand Canyon, on the Kaibab Plateau actually, which is where it gets its name from. Subspecies utensis, which I sometimes refer to on Instagram as regular degular utensis, grows in northern Arizona, southern Utah, southern Nevada, and southern California. And then the two Instagram favorite varieties, Eborospina and Nevadensis, only grow in Southern Nevada and Southern California, particularly around the Spring Mountain Range, which is where I go and see them and photograph them a bunch. Most experts believe that Cababensis is the oldest species, the oldest taxa of Agave utensis. And they believe that because of its flower structure. You see, Agave utensis, like most forms of agave, is monocarpic, meaning it flowers once in its life and then dies. But that flower structure for most kinds of utensis is variable. That means it can be one of basically three different kinds. It can be either spicket, racemos, or paniculate. Basically, those are three different kinds of flower structures. And as it's flowering, it produces a tall 10, 12, 15 foot flower stalk, and that's where the flowers grow from. Spicket flowers extend directly off of that main flower stalk. Racemose flowers don't grow directly from the flower stalk, but rather from small sort of stem-like appendages and paniculate inflorescences, paniculate flowers, are even more complicated still. Basically, you have your one main flower stalk, and then from that, there are those little stem-like appendages that branch, and then that's where the flowers grow from. The fact that most agave utensis has this variable inflorescence, meaning it can have any one of those three types of flower structures, that's probably evidence that it's the result of a rather recent field hybridization. Basically, two different forms of agave, two different species of agave, cross-pollinated at some point in history and produced what we know now as agave utensis. Agave utensis subspecies cababensis does not produce a variable inflorescence. It only produces one kind of inflorescence, and that's why most experts believe that it is the oldest form of agave utensis and not the result of a recent hybridization. And subspecies cababensis also tends to be much larger than the other varieties of utensis. Eborospina and nevadensis are the smallest and subspecies utensis is somewhere in the middle, but cababensis is far and away the largest form. Of the three agave utensis taxa other than cababensis, you have subspecies utensis and then within that variety nevadensis and variety eborospina. On Instagram, I often call agave utensis regular degular utensis, and that's mostly about the fact that it doesn't have the super elaborate uh, terminal spines and teeth that nevadensis and eborospina have. It doesn't have the super cool blue coloring that nevadensis can have. So compared to the other two, it's a little bit boring. The two Instagram favorite varieties, eborospina and nevadensis, on the other hand, are not boring at all. We'll start with nevadensis. Nevadensis grows to the south and east of eborospina, and it is remarkable because of its blue leaves, or at least that's my favorite characteristic of nevadensis, is its blue leaves. Blueness in plants is actually caused by a waxy or powdery coating that's referred to as glaucus. What that is, is it's basically a protection, kind of a sunscreen against harsh UV rays. And in many places, Nevadensis grows above 5,000, above 6,000 uh, feet in elevation where the UV light is much more intense. In fact, the higher up in elevation you go, the more intense UV radiation becomes. So to protect itself, many Utensis Nevadensis plants are very blue. And they have longer terminal spines and teeth than either subspecies cababensis or subspecies utensis, but they don't have quite the crazy elaborate spines and teeth that eborospina does. 
and Ebora spina, according to most experts, grows to the north and west of Nevadensis, and largely in the Spring Mountains and a few other neighboring mountain ranges, and in my experience, generally a little bit of a lower altitude than Nevadensis. And so that's one of the two major differences between Ebora spina and Nevadensis, is that it doesn't have quite the same blue, glaucous blue coating that Nevadensis plants have. It is usually much more of a, of a deeper green, a bit more similar to uh, Agave utensis subspecies Cababensis, which is a very deep green. But what it does have that makes it so beloved by collectors across the world is super elaborate, long, teeth and spines. In fact, its early common name was ivory spined agave because many experts first seeing it in the field believed that it only had ivory spines, whereas nevadensis, sometimes the center, central spines, the younger central spines, can be darker, can, can be sort of brown colored. Ebora spina spines are typically whiter, but this isn't set in stone as I've seen both nevadensis plants with mostly white spines and Ebora spina plants with some coloration in their spines. But generally speaking, it's the shape and size of Ibora spina spines that make it really noticeable in habitat. One of the defining traits of Utahensis is its variability in habitat. If you go visit a, a big population of Utahensis, you'll see plants feet from each other that look pretty different. And so any description, any characteristic, any trait that you could assign to Ibora spina or Nevadensis is bound to have some gray area in it. And one of those gray area traits is actually spine shape. So while Nevadensis spines are typically shorter than Ebora spina spines, generally when I see them in habitat, they're much more likely to be wavy or to, to, to be curly or spiral almost, versus Ebora spina's longer spines tend to be just sort of more bent in a specific direction or straight. And those wavy spines are a trait that is beloved by collectors. In fact, in, in Japan, they're referred to as keguru, uh, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, but uh, basically means summer heat or heat haze. Like if you think about a summer day, a hot summer day, staring at pavement or the top of the hood of a car, you can see you know heat waves rising up. And that's kind of what these wavy Nevadensis spines look like. Now I've seen some Ebora spina spines that are a little bit wavy, a little bit curly. Nothing is curly or spiral as Nevadensis generally, but again, this is one of those traits that is not 100% set in stone. So I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. What is your favorite type of agave utensis? Is it the big, giant subspecies Cababensis? Is it regular, degular utensis that you can find in four different states? Is it the super crazy long spined Ebora spina? Or is it, and this is my favorite, uh, the blue leaves of Nevadensis?